Hi, everybody. So today we are going to be talking about something that comes up quite a lot, and it's kind of a pet peeve of mine as well. A lot of people seem to use machine learning and artificial intelligence interchangeably. They are not interchangeable. They are different things. They are similar, but they're not the same. And I think a lot of people try to use the sexy word for machine learning, and they just say artificial intelligence. But today we're going to talk about what the differences are and kind of my take on how I talk about both of these topics since I talk about them quite a lot. All right, so let's start with machine learning. It learns something by observation, by being taught, just like a person, and then it uses that to use what it's learned on the rest of the world when it sees a new instance appear. So if I teach a machine what a cat looks like, what it sounds like, what its characteristics are, it will then be able to go out in the world and identify things that look, seem, sound like a cat. But what about a tiger? So that's where the self-learning comes into play, where humans still do need to have interaction. Because for all intents and purposes, a cat is sort of a broader term. You can consider a tiger a type of cat. Fills in the blanks, or tries to, just like a human does. So the example I always use, if I say I'm going down to the bank, you don't know if I mean to the financial institution or to a river bank. But if I add some context, I might say, oh, I need to go to the bank to get some checks. Okay, well, if you know that checks are usually associated with a financial institution, then as a human, you fill in those blanks. You know what the person is saying, even though they didn't say I'm going down to the financial institution bank. But if you're thinking about automating that, making it machine learning based, you might have to go in and teach the machine all the different aspects of the word bank. You have to teach the machine what those are before it can make sense of it. What does a human actually expect when something like this happens? So to a machine, if I don't teach it well, it might not realize the difference between something subtle like a snow bank and a water bank. Snow is just another type of water. So if I didn't teach the machine that snow and water are different, one is just a frozen form of water, it's not going to understand there's a difference between those two things. You still need to teach the machine correctly and make sure that even though it's self-learning at some point, it's in inferring things. A lot of machine learning is based on statistics. It's a probability analysis. When you're talking about an F score or an F measure definition right there, that is essentially what we're talking about when we're talking about machine learning. So what's the difference between this and artificial intelligence? I thought artificial intelligence, by definition, artificial intelligence. If a machine is starting to think on its own and infer things, wouldn't you classify that as a type of machine learning, artificial intelligence? Well, what does the rest of the world have to say? What does the community have to say about the differences between AI and ML? So the father of computer science, right, uh, Alan Turing, fabulous background on Alan Turing. If you've not read the details and his tragic passing was actually a very interesting and compelling story as well. So if you've not heard about that or if you want a whole video on it, let me know because he's a very fascinating person. He basically said what we are trying to achieve with machine learning is we want a machine that can learn from experience. So self-learning. So we are getting pretty close on that. Uh, there is something called the Turing test. That's something that a lot of people kind of use as the bar of, you know, is this real artificial intelligence or not? So another notable figure is Tom Mitchell. And Tom Mitchell describes machine learning as the study of computer algorithms that allow computer programs to automatically improve through experience. So again, you're giving the machine a training set, it is learning from it, and then it's given a test. 
and you get to test whether it understood what you taught it or not. And then you can calibrate it that way. It is still guided learning instead of um, unsupervised learning. So this is a difference in machine learning, supervised versus uh, unsupervised learning. So supervised learning is usually when you are giving it a training set, it learns from it, um, it tells you what it has learned, and then you autocorrect on that. A different way is the unsupervised learning, where you still have to give the machine a background, an understanding of the world. This is very common in neural networks, by the way, in deep learning, where if you use BERT, for instance, it is a neural network that has already been trained on the, the brain, the knowledge of the world. I don't know if I would call it that, but it's been trained on all wiki data, essentially. So you have a foundational understanding. That's what people have. When I make that analogy where I'm going to the bank to get a check, if you didn't know what a check was as a person, if you didn't have that, that, that growing up experience where maybe you had a parent or a grandparent that had to use checks, that human experience taught you what a check was. Machines don't have that ability. So, because they don't live, they don't have experiences like humans do. So we basically have to take all of that knowledge that humans have and document it in some way. That's the interesting thing with machine learning. If we don't record our knowledge, if we don't record our insights, there is absolutely no way we can get a machine to think about it for us. And that could be voice, it doesn't have to be text, it could be images. Machines can learn off of different mediums. This is how a lot of algorithms are used in things that we use every day. Google, Netflix, YouTube, Twitter, all of these use that human knowledge, that human interaction to understand and learn on the fly their machine learning to then serve up things better according to what they think that you're going to like. So that's self-learning. And those types of things are more along the lines of unsupervised learning, where you still give it that foundational knowledge. You still have to train it on that foundational knowledge, and then you let it loose. So clustering analysis is usually something that's on the unsupervised level. Things that are looking at feature extraction or nearest neighbor. Uh, deep walk is an example of this, where it's going in and looking at well, how does this entity relate to other entities in this space? So in the same article, all of which are below, Andrew Moore described artificial intelligence as the science and engineering of making computers behave in ways that until recently we thought required human intelligence. Again, it's, it's a theme that we're seeing. Artificial intelligence is the overarching application of machine learning. Machine learning is the actual thing people are doing. They are training machines. They are doing it with unsupervised learning, supervised learning, quasi mixes between those things. They're doing it on things that normally you would need humans to understand, like speech or images or things that you have to have that human understanding to be able to interpret what you're looking at. So in our discipline, artificial intelligence, that is usually how it is used. Again, I usually don't use artificial intelligence because the definition of, of that discipline continues to move forward. So anytime I would use artificial intelligence, um, it is to talk about the future, the way that we are thinking about machine learning, the applications of machine learning. It's not necessarily the thing that is being done by itself. Forbes also took a crack at this. And this was from Bernard Marr. He is very well known in this space. He has a whole podcast if you want to go check it out. And he is defining artificial intelligence as the broader concept of machines being able to carry out tasks in a way that we would consider smart. So this is a little different than what we've heard so, so far. This is just talking about that overall application of machines doing something that is smart and intelligent. Again, what does intelligence mean though? He also defines machine learning is the current application of AI. The idea that we should really just be able to give machines access to data and let them learn for themselves. This is more along the lines of what neural networks are doing and deep learning is doing because when you do traditional machine learning, it's not um, 
always focused on understanding that true breadth of human understanding, which is what neural networks are, are now starting to build off of. It's more um, machine, basic machine learning is, is a training set of some sort. So when you're doing deep learning and when you're doing neural networks, you still are giving it a training set. It's just a vast training set. And that's why you need those neural connections to be able to make sense of it. All right, and in towards data science, they are defining artificial intelligence as the broader concept. I think that we can all agree that this is how everyone is defining artificial intelligence as that broader application. And it consists from old fashioned AI, which is what they call um, some of the things that I was just mentioning, where it's very um, golden corpus you know, based, and then you start to learn from it. Um, and then it goes the whole way to the more futuristic technologies. Again, I would agree with that, but we're not there yet as far as that sentience piece. And then they also say that whenever a machine completes tasks based on stipulated rules that solve problems, then it is an intelligent behavior. And that is the artificial intelligence. So this is interesting because this one is kind of merging some of the distinctions that we saw in previous applications of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Basically saying that it means empowering computer systems with the ability to learn. The intention of machine learning is to enable machines to learn by themselves using provided data to make accurate predictions. So again, this is the application. So that is essentially what we're seeing throughout all of these different formats, that artificial intelligence is just the broader application of the, the goal in mind, which is eventually, so you go from that automation phase where you're just doing some basic um, machine learning rules. Next step would be something that is more like on the supervised level. Both of these are supervised, but this is more along the lines of teaching with a training set and then enabling with, with algorithms and certain methodologies, how the machine is going to take that data, learn from it, and then continuously learn and adapt. Once you get past that, I think that you're getting more into the artificial intelligence realm where you are uh, encoding a lot of the knowledge, not just specific subsets, for the base learning. And that's more on the neural network side, very much like BERT is doing, and GPT-3. Those are all using that um, extensive neural networks where it's doing a, a more accelerated version of, of DeepWalk, where it is trying to find different pathways to get to the same pieces of information or similar pieces of information to then learn from it. What are all of the ways that I could get to that end logic? That's essentially what deep learning is. That's essentially what a neural network is trying to do. That you can see is more along the lines of thinking. When you're looking at something as a human and you're trying to figure out how do I how do I solve for this problem? There are different ways I can solve it. Machine learning finds one path and it tells you this is the path, this is what happened, this is what I did. When you're getting into neural networks and more artificial intelligence, it's saying, well, I have, I have one way that I've learned, one, two, three, four. I have another path that I could take, one, two, three, four. It's all going to that same end goal, but it's learning that it's not just one path, it's many pathways. And that's very similar to how your actual neurons work in your brain, and that's why it's called neural networking. All right, so I hope that has helped you with the definitions between what is machine learning, what is artificial intelligence, and I think we even talked about neural networks and deep learning a little bit, which is really another subset of machine learning. And with that, thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.